Okay, so who would have thought that copying and pasting is gonna make this list of things you're doing wrong in PowerPoint? I didn't have a clue about this for the longest time. I'm happy that nothing was unintentionally leaked in the making and distribution of my PowerPoint presentations. Now, I'm not sure I can say the same about my ex-colleagues. So make sure you don't fall into that trap. So I'm gonna cover that in a second, but in addition to this, I decided to collect and combine a few things that many of us are doing consistently wrong in PowerPoint. I'm then gonna show you the better way of doing it. Now, some are productivity tips, they're design tips, and some are embarrassment saving tips. Let's start with that one first. Mistake number one is to add external links. For example, external links to videos like this. Why is this bad? Well, when you go to show the people this video and you click on this, it's gonna take them to YouTube. If you don't have anything to be embarrassed by, it's fine. But on the side here, what YouTube does is it recommends videos based on the topic that you're watching, but also based on the other things that you've watched before. And if you don't want that to show up on your feed, don't do this. Instead, you wanna embed the video on your slide. This is how you do that. Let's do it on a separate slide. I'm gonna take this away, then go to insert, media, video, online videos. Now just type the link to the YouTube video and then click on insert. Now you're in a safe space. You don't have to worry about whatever you've watched on YouTube before. You can just go ahead and play the video directly from here. If I go into presentation mode, I'm able to play this and then move on with my presentation. Mistake number two is to copy your charts from Excel and paste into PowerPoint without understanding the implications. Let me explain. So here in Excel, I have this Excel chart that I wanna bring over to my PowerPoint presentation. So I'm gonna select it, press Control C, go over to PowerPoint, and press Control V. That's the way most people do this. But what they might not be aware of is that the entire Excel workbook is now embedded in this presentation. So if I send this over to someone, I'm just gonna close off my Excel file. Someone else opens this, they can click on this, go here to chart design, edit the data, let's click on edit data, and they're gonna see that embedded workbook. They can obviously see all the data, so that's the data that's used for this chart, and they have access to any other information or any other tabs that I have in this workbook. Now, the good thing about this, though, is that it is dynamic. So if the data in the underlying workbook changes, you can come here and refresh the data, and you're going to grab the latest data. But if you're embedding lots of workbooks in your presentation, you're gonna blow up the file size. So what you wanna do instead, and what my preferred version is, is to link the chart to your presentation. So let me just open up the Excel workbook. You're gonna go and select your chart, press Control C, then go over to your PowerPoint, go to Paste Special, and you're gonna paste the link. Take a look at this. It's gonna insert a picture in your presentation, but it's gonna be a linked picture. So we're gonna go with okay, and we get our chart in here. All the formatting, everything comes over from Excel. That additional chart button thing is gone. We just have the shape format because now we're dealing with a shape. But the great thing is it is dynamic. Now, if you have additional data that you wanna copy over, so let's say you wanna copy chart and the data that I had on the bottom, you can do that by just selecting the region that you want copied. So I'm gonna go and select this, press Control C, go over to my slide, paste special, and paste the link. Now everything comes over. Now all of this is dynamic and we can go and double check that. So if something changes here, say this changes to a five, it pulls through here, now this, let me just make formulas for this too. I switch to my presentation, and we can see these updated automatically. Now, once you have these linked, you are responsible to maintain those links. If they change, you can go and update them by going to File, Info, and selecting Edit Links to Files. 
If you want to open up the original source, you can double click on this object and it's going to open up the underlying workbook. But this workbook isn't embedded, so your file size is going to be a lot smaller than if you were embedding these workbooks. If you don't need to have the latest data and you just want to have everything as an image, you go and copy, come back here and paste this as an image. Okay, so it's important to understand the different paste options that you have. Mistake number three is poor design. So another issue I often see is lack of consistency between the slides with different background and fonts. This is distracting to the audience. What you want to do instead is to keep the theme of the slides the same with clean backgrounds. You can use some supporting infographics and add an action title to each slide so the key message comes across right away. In terms of fonts, avoid italics and narrow fonts. Also fonts that simulate handwriting because they're quite difficult to read. Instead, use simple, well readable fonts with good contrast and use that font throughout the presentation. Now what happens when you collaborate with your colleagues is that each person has their own favorite font and you may end up with inconsistent fonts. A great tool to fix this is to replace all fonts in one go. You can find it in the Home tab. Under Replace, just click on this drop down and go to Replace Fonts. Select if it's just for this slide or the entire presentation. And then when you click on this first drop down, you can see all the different fonts that are used in your presentation. You can search and replace specific fonts or just replace all fonts with the default that you use throughout your company and then just click on replace. This automatically corrects all your fonts to the correct font. Now, another quick fix that helps out with good slide design is the align objects feature in PowerPoint. This way you avoid mispositioned shapes like this, and it's kind of difficult to try to get them right. All you have to do is select your objects, click on this drop down for a range, go to align, and decide on the alignment of your choice. I'm going to go with Align Center in this case. This makes for a much more professional look and design. So speaking of design, a great platform to learn design and many other skills is Skillshare, who've been kind enough to sponsor this video. What I like about learning experience there is that you get short, condensed classes. Now, I love learning new things, but unfortunately, like many of us, I can't afford to dedicate big chunks of time to learning. The short classes make it super easy. I can use whatever time I have and learn something new really fast. So for example, a class I found particularly helpful for designing PowerPoint presentations is the class Slide Deck Design for Non-Designers by Scott Shortly. In there, he talks about the do's and don'ts when it comes to slide design, and he shows a lot of different examples which I really liked. It's classes like this that can help you improve your skills. You can get the knowledge that you need to grow a side hustle if that's what you want to do right now, or to change the direction of your career. There are new premium classes launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. And because Skillshare is sponsoring today's video, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box below or use my code Leila Garani are going to get one month free trial of Skillshare. So make sure you check it out. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And now let's continue with the next common mistake. Mistake number four is to use distracting transitions and animations. So transitions and animations can be great tools to emphasize certain points over others. But most of the standard effects that we have in PowerPoint are too distracting and they can come across as childish in business settings. But applied with intent and in moderation, they can be quite effective. One of my favorite transitions is called Morph. You can create super smooth professional effects in seconds that are going to look like you spent hours creating. I have a separate video on this. If you want to learn more, just check out the cards or the description box below the video. Next mistake is to fill up your slides with text. When you put too much text on a slide, the audience will focus on reading rather than listening to what you have to say. And it's easy to lose the key points. Not to mention the more that you're trying to squeeze into a single slide, the smaller your font gets and it becomes harder to read. So often a combination of words and graphics is most effective in getting your points across. 
infographics and icons help to graphically accentuate your text. And since we're on the topic of text, don't forget that you have proofing tools built into PowerPoint. Go to the review tab and run a spell check to avoid embarrassment over typos. Now, honestly, whatever I tend to do, I manage to get typos across to my produced videos. So I need to work on this bit too. Last mistake is poor use of images. So while it's true that a picture says more than a thousand words, you shouldn't overdo it either. When you have too many images crammed onto a slide, it becomes distracting. And again, it takes away from your main message. So it's much better to use just one high quality image that sums up the main theme of the slide. Where do you get your images? Well, there are lots of different websites that give you high quality images that are also in Creative Commons. You can also do a Google search for the image that you want. So I'm just going to type pizza and switch to images. Here you're going to want to click on tools, usage rights, and select Creative Commons licenses. Okay, so make sure whatever image you're using, you are actually allowed to use it. Now, if you have Office 365, what you could do is go directly to the insert tab here, go to pictures and go to online pictures. Here, the default selection is for Creative Commons and you can type in your search and you're going to find some high quality images that you can use. Now, in Office 365, you have more options. If you go to icons, you get to use a bunch of different icons. You have images here, cutout people, stickers, which you probably don't want to use if you have a serious business meeting. You have videos, illustrations, and even cartoon people. Now, sometimes when you insert an image, it has this background that you might want to remove because it doesn't fit with the rest of your slide. You can also easily do that in PowerPoint. You don't need to use a separate photo editing app. Just click on your picture, go to picture format and select remove background. This is automatically going to try and figure out what background it is and it's going to remove it for you. So this part that's in purple will be removed if I click on keep changes. If I notice that the wrong parts are selected, I can mark areas to keep. It's going to keep that or mark areas to remove. Once I have done my selection, I'm going to click on keep changes and I have my image without the background. I could now go ahead and also crop this as I need. Now, if your image has a solid background, it's even easier. You just have to click on the image, go to picture format, color, down here, set transparent color, and then just click on this background. It's automatically removed. Now you can go ahead and place this where you want on your presentation. Okay, so I hope this rundown of common PowerPoint mistakes is gonna help you improve your future presentations. Now I can proudly say I've done it all. I've made all six mistakes. What about you? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any other mistakes that you've made or you've seen others make, please comment below and let us know. Before leaving, do consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Give this video a thumbs up and I'm going to see you in the next video.